Hey, it's Joseph here. The season has changed. I've been trying a few different things in terms of my setup, change up a bit. And that's why you've been seeing a couple of my videos regarding that. And I think today is gonna be another one of those. So here is fairly big box that doesn't fit on the screen but as you can see it is a gigabyte m27q and it is well namely gaming monitor but i think it's going to be a good suit for professional usage as well and the reason for that is because although it is 27 inches it is a qhd monitor and frankly you can go up to uhd which is 4k display but i think you're putting a lot of strain on your computer by introducing too many pixels to think about. So I think Quad HD 1440p works for professionals who's just trying to do their jobs. But here are other features that I would also like to introduce. So on this first box, I believe it says the same thing over here. One millisecond, 170 hertz, it means it's a very responsive high refresh rate screen which may or may not matter much for you it usually is meant for gaming purposes so i may just kind of dial that down and the second one that you can see is ips obviously ips is great for color accuracy and the third box is usb type c and then there is actually kvm switch i'll get to that in a bit but kvm is meant for device switching i think it is actually good for professional usage but but the next box is game assist which i don't think matters for us and then osd super wide color gamut so i'm about to test it out myself and see how good the displays are but let's get it open Oh, by the way, Gigabyte has provided me this as a product sample for me to try out and make a video out of it. So this is me at it. I think I am meant to put this down flat on the ground. And because this is 27 inches, this is just enough size for me to put it on the desk. And because it is QHD, it is going to be 2560 by 1440p. That's how many pixels are going to be width and height. So there are a few things here. Cable, cable, another cable, another cable, another cable, cables, and then some paperwork. All of this is including the power and different methods to connect your display. They have included different region power cable as well. This is not US. I'm guessing maybe like Australia. Okay, this one is Europe, which I don't need. Here is a US prong I'm gonna keep. There's a USB cable for the upstream so that you can have 3.0 or higher service, as well as one display port cable and then HDMI cable. I think I'm gonna be using this play port cable so let me put this one aside as well as a USB upstream one. This is gonna be important for the KVM switch side. What KVM is basically doing is the fact that you can connect peripherals onto your monitor and then as you switch the monitor from one input source to the other it is actually going to switch that service onto a different device. So for example if you are using your monitor with with the laptop then you can use all the keyboard and the mouse and all the peripherals that are connected to it with that laptop but then when you use a KVM switch it can switch back to like a desktop so that the monitor is now showing desktop and all the peripherals are being used on the desktop it's able to kind of switch in between let's see how that actually works in practice but that's what it's supposed to do there are some more cable here which is the power brick and then there is the feet. How does it look? When handling a monitor, something to watch out for is not to put this monitor onto any other surface because you can easily scratch the panel. I actually have done that. I'm speaking with the experience unfortunately. So there is a little screw that you're gonna thread into the bottom here. All right, the feet is in. Well, that doesn't look like much, does it? Let's look at the back. So back here, what you can actually see is a little sticker. There's a warning. You're supposed to take the foam out as well as a piece that is wedged in between. 
Okay, there was this plastic piece that was wedged in. So I guess that allows for this monitor to move up and down and then tilt up and down like that as well. There's a grommet here for you to put cables so that neatly organize this. And there is more plastic as well as one back here. That was quite satisfying. I'm only showing you this arm system only because it is included in the kit. I'm gonna use this VESA mount to mount onto my monitor arm, so I will actually be putting this back in the box. Here I am just trying to show you what's around the back, as on the front, there's not much. So here on this corner is a little knob for you to control OS inside of the monitor for you to change brightness, contrast, and source, that sort of thing. And then there's a little switch called KVM. So I guess you press that to change up your peripherals to different device. That's pretty much it in terms of what we got. So let me look at the bottom side so I can tell you what's there in terms of the connection. Okay, I could actually kind of see it down here. Turn on the camera so you guys could also see it too. All right, so down here, what I can see is two HDMI port with a combo headphone jack on one corner, as well as display port, USB-C port, and then upstream for the USB-3, and then the two downstream for the USB. And then on one corner, it is a power cable. I can see a Kensington lock point if you care for that, but that's about it. Okay, I think that is it as far as the unboxing goes. Now it's time for me to just kind of mount this on my setup and then test it out and tell you about what I have experienced. Okay, so after several days, this is all how it's been put together. And to be clear, this monitor always was set out to be the secondary monitor for my setup. Having a second or the third monitor on your production setup makes a lot of sense. It really boosts your multitasking. At least for myself, I always find myself having the folder for the project open and all the files that has to do with the specific project that I'm working on, PDF documents, email client, and sometimes listening to music or Microsoft Teams as I communicate to my team members through there, as well as having a lot of tabs open on your Google Chrome. So it makes a lot of sense to have all of those information showed so that you can just keep on working on one screen and then a lot of other information shown on the other side of the screen. However, you can actually have too much screen real estate. If you have too many things shown in front of you, you're going to be turning left to right or top to bottom and then not be able to find information as quick as possible. And actually it adds more constraint to your machine, adding more demand to your machine so that it needs to do a lot more tests, therefore kind of slowing down your machine as well. So there's going to be a fine balance that you're going to have to find out for your purpose. So I would think everyone has sort of different balancing point between how much money that you can actually spend on all of these monitors as well as how much you actually need that you can practically benefit from. Because I do a lot of screen recording for tutorials and screen sharing sessions, I needed a monitor that has more normal screen ratio as well as a normal screen resolution so that people can actually read or see what I am seeing on the screen. For such purpose, I have been using this Dell monitor for many, many years. To be specific, the model name is U2312HMT, and it was manufactured in August 2013. And the first one that I bought was actually from my college days. And I say first because I've actually purchased three of the same model of the monitor. Since I moved so much, I ended up selling the previous ones. I liked it so much that I kept buying the same one. And I I understand it has been quite a popular model that has been quite well sold. However, in recent days, as I have tried many different bigger and better monitors, I have realized how it was lacking in some areas, especially in the resolution department as well as color accuracy. 
obviously the technology for the monitors have moved on quite a lot since 10 years ago. And in practice, 1080p or full HD at 23 inch format, you can actually start to pick up the pixels on your screen so the text and the lines are not as sharp as some of the other denser or higher resolution monitors. However, if you were to add another 4K screen to your computer for a secondary monitor, you're going to introduce a lot of demand to your computer to think about in terms of graphics. Therefore, it is going to slow down your machine in high demanding tasks. Therefore, you want to go somewhere in between 1080p and 4K, which is actually 1440p, which is also called Quad HD if you're familiar with that term. So 1080p is FHD or Full HD as a name, and then 1440p is QHD or Quad HD, and then the 4K is either UHD or Ultra HD. So at least for my purpose, it made perfect sense for me to go 1440p monitor. So I actually had asked Santa to give me 27 inch monitor that is 1440p as well as color accurate. And I actually ended up canceling it because fortunately Gigabyte sent me me this unit for the review. So I guess I can go back to being naughty again. Upon testing, although Gigabyte's M27Q monitor is marketed as sort of a gaming monitor, however, it seems to work quite well for production and creator purpose as well. It has a well-balanced resolution of 1440p as well as great color accuracy. And I personally find a lot of RGBs on the gaming monitors really distracting. However, this one did not have any of the RGB feature, which I kind of appreciate. Just a simple Gigabyte logo at the bottom of the screen, as well as really thin bezel all around. There's actually one really unique and interesting feature of this monitor, which is KVM switch. I can actually connect this single dongle onto the monitor and connect both of my keyboard and a mouse and some other peripherals via USB that is available on the monitor. I can actually connect my desktop as well as my laptop to this single screen and then be able to switch between two with the one set of peripherals that are connected to both of the machine via one button that is positioned behind the screen. Okay, so this is right now how I have set up everything. So this is a desktop that I regularly use, which is located here and it is connected to all of those. And both of my peripherals are actually connected via a single dongle that I showed you and it is connected behind this monitor. So I'm able to navigate with my keyboard and a mouse. And here is my laptop. If I'm needing to just continue on working and then I can just connect to the single USB-C port which is connected to the hub and it has a USB-C power delivery. Therefore, it is powering my laptop. And then here is a USB a type port that is also connected to this monitor via USB-C port. And then here is the HDMI connected to the monitor here as well. So I can go to behind. So there is actually the switch, KVM switch. Behind the monitor, I can simply press that button. This monitor goes off and then starts duplicating the screen here. So you see that's just a image there and I'm able to move it with my mouse over here. So that is now connected together. So if you got multiple device set up, this could actually be your phone or iPad if you want it to be or another PC for that matter. But right now I got these two devices, both of them connected to this monitor and they can share the same monitor via single button that is positioned behind the monitor. I can see this feature being really useful for those of you who jump between two machines a lot on the same setup. And actually for that matter, you can jump between PC and Mac as well. And if I wanna just carry on doing some light tasks, I can arrive at the desk, connect the cable, one single cable USB-C onto the laptop, just continue working with the peripherals that are connected here. And then if I'm needing to do set of tasks that are really demanding, therefore I need my big fat desktop to perform, then I can just press on single button 
and then switch over to the desktop with the same set of peripherals. I'm actually curious to learn how all of you are working in this sort of remote situation of 2020. How many monitors do you actually have on your own setup? And what are the sizes and the resolution of those monitors? Do you actually have a dedicated space for working or do you just have a dining table that you just clean up once you're done working? Please leave your answers down in the comment below. I'd love to talk to you there. If you have enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to my channel if you want to continue watching these type of videos. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.